Metaverse and gaming projects are starting to pop off and one of the most recent popular ones is powered by Polygon. Welcome back everyone to another Polygon Matic video. If you do enjoy staying up to date with everything Polygon and crypto related, make sure that you're subscribed so you're never missing out. Consider following me on Twitter where I post daily information around the Polygon ecosystem at NARB Trading. Gently tap on that like button and let's get right into it. So if you are at least somewhat involved within the NFT gaming metaverse space, you've probably become aware of the recent hype around NFT worlds. This is a project based around the incredibly popular game Minecraft that has now made a shift to Web3 due to Minecraft's open source system, meaning anyone that has the knowledge to do so can build on top of it. This was initially a free mint of 10,000 different worlds and today the floor of these currently sits around 13 ETH, which is a ridiculous return on investment if you've held this long. But this metaverse or gaming project has become an extremely hot topic recently, so let's read over how this works. So the sandbox style video game Minecraft released back in 2011 is getting a Web3 update thanks to a few developers unaffiliated with Microsoft. So again, this is not directly from Microsoft themselves. You are able to build your own mods or code within Minecraft and that is how all this is possible. NFT Worlds is a project built on the third party Minecraft servers with a Polygon based overlay. Polygon is an Ethereum sidechain, not technically a sidechain, but we'll let that slide, which offers low gas fees for users. Users. NFT World's blockchain layer on Minecraft will allow players to access Web3 features, such as an online shop where they can buy items for their Minecraft experience using the World ERC20 token. So essentially, within the game or metaverse, you are able to transact or trade items using the World token, which those transactions are made fast and cheap by the Polygon POS chain. Obviously, these types of games cannot be held on Layer 1 Ethereum because trading items in the game with ridiculous fees would not be the ideal experience. This then talks about how Minecraft is open source so anyone can build on top of it, and then shows a demo of how players are able to purchase in-game items using the world token, which is very, very cool. Using this magic internet money or cryptocurrency, which allows for the play to earn type of environment. And then moving on, something that I found really interesting is sort of a comparison between other popular metaverse projects, and comparing these sizes of land that you get when purchasing these land NFTs. So this is Sandbox, Decentraland, and NFT World side by side side, which by the way, all these are also powered by Polygon, but you can see the massive difference in the amount of area you get with NFT worlds versus these other projects. And the craziest part about this is, this is the entire sandbox and all of Decentraland compared to just one NFT world. So this really puts the size difference into perspective of how much area they allow you to build upon. So just another benefit of NFT worlds. Moving along, the co-founders chose to build on Minecraft because they see Microsoft as developer friendly and less strict than competitors like Roblox. Minecraft has a really large, custom thriving game development system, ArcDev said. Microsoft appears to be supportive of metaverse thinking more broadly, as its $68.7 billion acquisition of Activision Blizzard last month was partially aimed at helping it develop building blocks for the metaverse. So yes, Microsoft themselves are also looking into the metaverse. These major companies cannot ignore what's happening in the space right now. But building a Web3 world on top of an existing centralized game owned by by a billion dollar company isn't without its risks. ArcDev and TempTranquil are well aware of the chance that they might get rugged by Microsoft, meaning that Microsoft could shut down their project at any time with legal action. So definitely surprising to hear this from the founders, although I don't think Microsoft would actually do this. There certainly would be a lot of pushback if they did, but it's certainly important to understand the potential risks of building on a centralized game. This is not being built completely from scratch by any means, and adding on to this, to prevent this, they maintain close contact with Microsoft reps to make sure they don't violate Minecraft's end user license agreement at any stage of development. Minecraft's EULA states that no one is allowed to make commercial use of anything we've made or try to make money from anything we've made, rules which could be applied against NFT worlds in the future. We do work pretty closely with their IP enforcement team, Tranquil said in the Twitter space. They're in our Discord constantly, kind of reviewing our chat, and we have meetings with them. That being said, it's unclear whether Microsoft approves of the project. They're watching us from the sidelines, not like a formal green light, but I think in their eyes, we are the best case scenario for someone using their product. So this is also pretty interesting. It's obviously very positive that the NFT World's team is trying to keep close relationship with Microsoft, and Microsoft seems to be lurking in their Discord as well, so they've certainly caught their attention. But it's definitely good to see the founders here being honest and warning their users about the risks here. So overall, folks, I think this is a very cool project. There doesn't seem to be too much worry about Microsoft actually getting involved 
all of this, obviously the project is performing very well. It is great to see all these successful projects on Polygon. Polygon is certainly thriving in the gaming space. Definitely one of the biggest, if not the biggest blockchain for gaming at this point. And just another reason why I am bullish on the Polygon ecosystem and of course the Matic token as well. And speaking of the Matic token, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the charts. So the Matic price is starting to bounce a little bit, up 3% in the market cap 11 billion. And folks, here on the daily chart, Matic has held on by a thread on this $1.50 area of support. I know we did wick down a few times, but I would say that this has held up relatively well, especially with everything happening in the world right now. And especially in the long term, as we zoom out to the weekly time frame, this has so far been a perfect hold of this 50-week moving average. Last week's candle did end up closing above that yellow line, which is a very good sign. Of course, we don't have confirmation that we won't go lower, but for right now anyway, this is not a bad look in my opinion. Moving over to Bitcoin today, giving us a strong green candle, obviously still a lot of price levels to regain before we can get too excited, but the price is currently making a higher low, which is something we really haven't seen since the start of this downtrend in early November. So BTC did break back above 40K, Matic back above $1.50, and then for ETH, we are seeing a nice green candle, but of course still a lot of work to do to break out of this downtrend. But on the bright side, similar to Bitcoin, the ETH price is also looking to print a higher low. So generally, I would say the prices have just really been consolidating at this recent bottom pretty much all around. Not a whole lot of change or clear direction on where things are going just yet. But of course, folks, that vision of where things are heading in the long term has not changed. But that is going to be it for today's video. I thank you all very much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed so you're never missing out. Leave a like, it really helps me out. I'll see you all next time.